So today in Toronto, we're here for PodCamp 2023. Now, this is day two, day one. I came in a little late, so I was, ran and didn't have time to do a podcast. And since I'm using my phone, I don't really have a uh, stabilization either. Although maybe if I hold it a little bit different, I don't think that helps at all. But there you go. So PodCamp is an annual event here in Toronto for podcasters. And you might think, why as a YouTube person am I going to a podcast conference? And the reality is there's a lot of overlap. And because I'm also thinking maybe do a YouTube podcast. We'll see. A video cast or whatever they want to call it. So I'm here to learn, see how things are going. And I'm going to show you some clips from inside. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I traveled all the way to Toronto, so might as well make the most of it. Plus also maybe I convince Jeff Eatley, Jeff Eatley to give me another $20. Even though he still owes me the first $20. Which is cool because, you know, I don't know if he was serious about that in the first place. But there you go. This video is sponsored by Jeff Eatley. Maybe, maybe not. Check out his cruise detours. If you like to think about taking a cruise, Jeff Eatley is the guy to talk to. And I think he's leaving today on a cruise. So maybe not talk to for the next like seven days, but after that, yeah, you could probably get in touch with him. All right, let's go to this podcast thing. Podcamp thing, podcamp, whatever. We're going, conference. Ah. So before we get into what I actually learned at PodCamp Toronto, I do want to talk to you about what is PodCamp Toronto. And PodCamp Toronto is an unconference, which they define as a loosely structured conference emphasizing the informal exchange of information and ideas between participants, rather than following a conventional structured program of events. And essentially what it was is a bunch of talks that you could go in and out of to hear various topics about podcasting from learning how to start your own podcast to learning about some of the equipment that you might need for podcasting to learn some of the techniques for podcasting how to like set up a podcast and how to choose your topics to more business dependent um, concepts like how to grow your podcast how to get your podcast impact and also important things like how to manage expectations imposter syndrome and understanding that Done is better than perfect because perfect is impossible. And that's the first thing I'm going to cover in what I learned at PodCamp is that we're all here. We all have different struggles, but we all are struggling the same. And what I mean by that is while you may think, oh, no, I have a problem. It's not necessarily uniquely you. And there's probably somebody who's had that problem and they have come up with a solution or two or three that you can then learn and implement to get out of your struggles. That is what's really nice about this type of unconference and group gathering is that you can talk to people and learn and ask questions and say, hey, here's a problem I have. What is the potential solution? And somebody, if it's not the speaker of that particular group, somebody else in the audience might say, hey, I ran into that problem. Here's what I did to overcome it. Things like imposter syndrome, things like not having a lot of growth or simply saying, hey, I want to make a podcast for fun. How can I do this without getting burnt out or feeling like overwhelmed with expectations? Trust me, after two days, you hear a lot of people's struggles and a lot of people's success over those struggles to learn that your struggles, while they do exist, are conquerable, which I think is a very good thing from a mental health standpoint. The next thing I learned at podcast is that it's okay to break all the rules. This was a really interesting talk by Diana Varma uh, of Talk Paper Scissors, where she talks about how she's doing podcasting different than a lot of other places that are doing it strictly for monetization and business. And I think this is important because while yes, she does break a lot of rules and does things very differently than a lot of like standard podcast community teachings would have, she could show where she could get different types of success and while, yes, that may not be the direction you want to go, I definitely learned a lot of cool things um, at that conference. Things like ASMR, apparently a sound porn. I did not know that. I now know that now. You cannot unlearn that. I also learned that, you know, while, yes, having a schedule and being consistent is important, what's more important is that you don't get burnt out trying to push a schedule that you can't maintain because of your obligations in life or just simply you tried to take on too much at the end of the day done is better than perfect and just simply getting it out and taking a break when you need it is probably going to be more helpful in the long run than trying to short run different content that you didn't 
really feel 100% up to making. Another thing I learned was in the Zero to Hero conference with Nina Clapperton of She Knows SEO was that when you're doing SEO and the tools that are available for SEO are often ad-based. In other words, a lot of these tools are looking at advertiser revenue and how you can maximize how much money you're making by targeting keywords that have high traffic and relatively low results. In her talk, she actually talked about going after basically zero page volume keywords. In other words, going after the answers that nobody has answered yet, or going after more specifically, nobody's answered them. And the idea summarized was go after hyper niche, low searched volume keywords that you could get a high ranking for in your specific topical field. The idea being is that that allows you to drag in a couple hundred or maybe even a couple thousand views a month from that topic because no one else has covered it and you build up your knowledge base by basically answering questions that people have that simply don't have an answer yet on the internet because a lot of the questions that Google and other search engines get are actually new questions. And I'm going to definitely test that out once I get home because there is some parts of where I am, there are questions that need to be done. And I really enjoyed that talk because she went through the process of actually how to do it. Another thing I learned at PodCamp 2023 was how to pitch yourself to sponsors. Now this was by Erin at Pina Travel and her podcast, Alpaca My Bags. And yes, that is Alpaca the Animal. And what she talked about was different types of sponsorship that is available for the podcasting community, which you can to a degree drag over to video podcasting community or video community. And she also talked about how she would write her cover letter, when to provide metrics and also your rate sheet, which I thought was quite interesting. But also she talked about when to follow up with companies and also some of the hurdles that she and her team had encountered. There are also questions from the audience that got answered. And one really good takeaway was that you should always plan about a two month lead time for when you contact a sponsor to when you're hoping to actually have that sponsorship in your podcast or getting ready at the start of your season. Um, that gives you enough time to communicate with them, to negotiate and get the contract signed before you actually go into production because you don't want to start a new advertiser midway through a season or still be trying to find people to sponsor your season when you're already a few episodes in. Very useful to know. Another useful takeaway that I learned was that <clears throat> another useful takeaway that I've learned that I'm actually using right now is from the top 10 things I wish I knew before I started my podcast, which was a talk by Marco Timpano, which was always do a snap or couple whenever you make a mistake so that you can find it in the edit because it leaves a vertical line in your audio stream that you can then pick up and correct. And this avoids you making mistakes. And then when you're listening back, accidentally not hear them, forget to take them out in your audio. Along a similar line, I also went to podcast audio Ask Me Anything with Sean Savage, where I was able to ask questions about my specific audio requirements and what I should do to try to improve my sound without having to create more hassle or more accurately reduce the amount of hassle I was already doing. And for my case, and I think for a lot of people, he highly recommended the Shure MV7 microphone. And the reason for this is because it is a USB and XLR microphone, which means that you can use it with USB and the Motive app, and you can get really good sound that gets you close to the more expensive and popular Shure SM7B that a lot of us have seen around, but for about half the price. Furthermore, because it does have XLR, it means that you can actually go and take that XLR later and plug it into a audio interface or a recorder and record off of it once you have a really good preamp or something like a roadcaster or something similar. Now, and a quick little check on the internet also sort of confirmed that the MV7 microphone from Shure is a solid purchase item if you are into doing podcasts or if you need a good microphone like I do for voiceovers of my video. I got to save up some money for this, but if you want to help or you're interested in getting one yourself, I do have an affiliate link below. And here, and that's it for blah, 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 blah. 
Let's learn to talk. And that's it for PodCamp 2023. And it's been a great time. I've learned a lot of stuff. I hope that this little recap video for you, you have also gotten some value from it. If you have additional questions or you're interested in going to PodCamp 2024, be sure to check out their website, which I'll have linked in the description. And yes, they are looking for sponsorship to uh, help fund the PodCamps each year. So if you are interested in this and do have a bit of money in your marketing budget towards podcasters, uh, be sure to give them a shout. Until then, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.